It is Christmas Eve, and that means there are seven weeks to go until the Tarawera Ultra Marathon. Here in Auckland, the weather has been really quite interesting. It's very, very hot and sticky, and it's been absolutely pouring with rain. So I just got back from my hour and a half run, and I got absolutely soaked in about the first five or ten minutes. But it's still really important you get out in these kind of conditions, because it does rain on race day too. Um, there were some good reactions online to my last video about knowing your why. There were varying from someone who said, I've done it several times, I have no idea what my why is, it just seems to happen for me. Hey, that's fantastic. You do you. Um, on the other hand, my favourite comment came from Anton Phoebes, please excuse me if I've mispronounced your name, who said, you know, sometimes it's just really fun to throw yourself off a cliff and work out on the way down how you're going to stick the landing. Sir, I salute you. That is a superb why, and I thoroughly approve. Uh, the topic of today's uh, video is compulsory gear. Now, at Tarawera, much like many other ultramarathons, there's a list of gear that you've got to have. Now, at Tarawera, for the 21k, 50k, and 102k, what happens is there's a list. A couple of days before the race, they specify which items from that list you're going to need to have, depending on the conditions. It's a bit different from the miler. There is a slightly longer list, and you must have all of that gear on you at all times during the race, regardless of the conditions. Actually, in some ways, it just makes it simpler. If you haven't already got this gear, you should probably think about getting it together pretty soon, simply because, you're, number one, you're going to need it for the race, and having it now saves faffing around later. Um, number two, you should probably train with it an awful lot. And number three, most of this is the kind of gear you're going to want to have with you on the trails a lot of the time in New Zealand anyway, so it's useful stuff to have. Um, number one on the list, head torch. Uh, I have a Black Diamond Sprinter. It's a replacement for my old one, which I lost. Uh, it's a good torch, 300 and something lumens. Um, you can adjust the brightness. It's got flashing lights on the rear, which several races kind of specify you need to have. You can also charge it through a USB port, um, and you can just take the battery out and stick a spare battery in. Because at Tarawera, you need to have head torch, and you either need to have a spare head torch, spare batteries, or you can use a USB power bank um, and uh, a, a cable. Um, my personal recommendation is you either have two head torches or a torch and a spare battery, because it's just fewer things to lose. It's very easy to lose a, a, a cable like that in the middle of a race, and it's not ideal, really. So, head torch. Um, the next thing is thermal gear, and we should probably talk a little bit about this. Now, it used to be wool, polypro, or merino, um, and it was always a little bit ambiguous around polyester. Um, now, it doesn't take someone with a master's degree in chemistry to tell you that actually modern polyester is probably just as good or maybe even better than those. However, just fortunately, I happen to have a master's degree in chemistry, and I can tell you that. Uh, modern polyester, such as um, you know, this Arcteryx top, Arcteryx top, which I've had for uh, six or seven years, really great top, um, is, is, is fine. And in fact, now, following a couple of conversations that seem to happen on the Facebook site, every single year. Those great men and women at the Tarawera Ultramarathon have clarified that actually, yes, polyester is fine. Um, so, thermal top must be from um, wool, polypro, uh, merino, or modern polyester. Um, it needs to be thermal, it needs to be quick dry. Um, so I've got my Arcteryx gear, which is my favourite gear. It's really nice on the skin, um, it dries really, really well, and it's really, really warm. It conditions. Um, other possibilities, uh, you, I, I've got a set of Merino, um, which is really good uh, also. Um, I probably prefer it in colder conditions, it just seems to be a bit better, that's a personal preference. Um, so that's, you know, I've got some icebreaker stuff, I got given that, I did not buy it with my own money, everything else I've bought with my own money. Um, that's quite good. You can also just buy cheap polypro from Kathmandu or Bivouac or further faster down in Christchurch. They all sell them. It's much, much cheaper. It's actually really good gear. I find it a bit scratchy personally, so I prefer these kind of things. But they'll all do just fine. So you don't need to spend a fortune on it. Uh, you need to have a hat. I have a merino hat. It weighs literally nothing. It's quite warm. It's great in the wet. Used it in the wet. It's absolutely fantastic, and it folds up really, really small with, you know, as I said last year, top tip, elastic bands, 
wrap them around your gear. They keep everything in a small little package that stays neatly to itself. Um, uh, other possibilities, uh, I've used a fleece hat before. That's absolutely fine, although technically fleece is polyester, but there we go. Um, so that's fine. Uh, buff. Now, I personally always have a buff with me, but I wouldn't use it as my only option for my head because I don't think it's as thermally insulating as a proper hat. So I have this in addition to. Um, it's great. Wipe yourself with it if you're very, very sweaty. Wear it around your neck. Put it over your head as a hood. It's just a, a, a useful bit of kit and folds up small, weighs nothing. You know, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, gloves. Lots of options with gloves, you know. Um, I have cheap pair of wool gloves that I bought years ago, cost me 10 bucks. They're okay, a bit scratchy. Um, last year I found a MacPack pair of gloves actually at Egmont Visitor Center in Taranaki, go figure. Um, even lighter, really nice. They feel just a little bit less scratchy on my skin. They weigh nothing and they, they pack down really, really small. Uh, 12 bucks maybe? really cheap stuff you don't need to break the bank to get good quality gear and it's worth having good quality gear um waterproof jackets now um i have a an outdoor research helium 2 jacket um i've shown it on my videos before um it's still going seven years after i bought it i don't use it that often i do try and look after it and in New Zealand, really, that means keeping it out of the sun because the UV here degrades plastics and polymers and stuff like that really, really quickly. Um, you must have two features. You must have a hood. Um, this one comes with a brim with a wire that's quite good and a peak. That's quite nice because I wear glasses when I'm trail running because I'm blind otherwise. And that keeps the rain off. So you must have a hood. You also must have a seam sealed jacket. Now, um, if you're not quite sure, go and speak to the people at an outdoor shop and they'll usually be incredibly helpful. Um, the other thing is, um, if you look in the jacket, and I hopefully you might be able to see that in the seam along here, there's you can see that there's a sort of slightly different shiny bit over the seam, about half a centimetre either side. Now that's seam sealing, and all it is is like a tape that's put over the you know, where the, the seam, where things, the garment is sewn together, and it's effectively ironed on or heat sealed on. And what it does is um, it joins up the edges of the fabric and it fills in all the holes where the thread goes through to sew it together. So it makes sure the jacket stays as waterproof as it possibly can. Um, so, yeah, there's plenty of options. Uh, MacPack have an option. Um, you know, Arcteryx have an option, uh, though that's probably quite an expensive one. Um, so, you know, you shouldn't have a problem finding one of these, anything from 50, 60 bucks up to probably three or 400 if you really want to, to spend the cash. It's worthwhile getting a good one and looking after it though, because like I say, buy expensive, cry once. Uh, survival bag. Um, I thoroughly recommend getting one of these, which is a Survive Outdoor Longer SOL. Um, bag and what it is, it is like the um, aluminized mylar blankets that you see at the end of marathons sometimes they put them around. Similar material but it's thicker, it's more durable and it's taped into an actual bivy bag so it is a long rectangular bag that you can crawl in from one end. It will keep the heat in incredibly incredibly well um, and stop you getting hypothermia and it's also waterproof. Um, that I think is 50 or 60 bucks and you can definitely get them at MacPack bivouac, um, possibly one or two other places as well. Really, really great bit of kit. Folds up small, yeah, top, top, top piece. Um, Self-adhesive bandage. Uh, this uh, is the one I had for the 2019 Tarawira Miler. My Spaniel had a go at this, so I probably need to go and buy another one. It's kind of lost its, its self-adhesion. It's kind of okay-ish, but not really. So I need to get a new one. Um, the material is Coban 3M. Um, it must be at least 40 millimeters wide and two, me two meters long. It's about somewhere between five and $15, depending on which particular brand you buy. So this is a 3M Coban one, but there are other companies that make them as well. So I've seen them in uh, a number of uh, New Zealand pharmacies, but I've also seen them in Rebel Sport. Um, so look around, you should be able to get one of those for let's say 10 bucks. So yeah, not a problem at all. And I'll stick some links in the comments below to do that. You must have a mobile phone and it must be charged um, and it must be in a waterproof container. Um, I've 
experimented with various waterproof containers and I've come to the conclusion that the best option is the high-tech Ziploc bag um, because you just get your phone, you shove it in there, you squeeze the air out, you zip it and you're done. And the other thing is you can actually, through a Ziploc bag, still use your phone. So um, it's probably the, the, the best and the cheapest option. Try and reuse your Ziploc bags if you can. Um, they are single-use plastics, and so the more uses you get out of them, the better that is. Single-use plastics are not great for the environment. Keep using them. Uh, now, you must also have something in which to carry all of this gear. So you're going to need some kind of hydration vest. Uh, the way it describes it in the compulsory gear list, and I'll link that again below, is you need water bottle, collapsible cup, hydration vest, or bag. Get something like this. Um, this is a Salomon 12 litre. It's probably the most common vest that people use. Um, it comes with uh, two 500 mil bottles in the front. Um, it's a great bit of kit. Uh, they are quite expensive. I think it's just shy of uh, maybe $280. Um, there are cheaper options on the market that are probably as good. Like there's the Kathmandu Zia Light, which I think you can pick up for about half that price and is a perfectly good bit of kit, so you don't need to break the bank. And you see them going half price quite often. Um, so there are other options out there. Nathan um, also make hydration vests. There's, there's a lot of options Camelback do as well. You're probably going to need somewhere between 10 or 15 litres. I wouldn't go any smaller than that personally, just because you've actually got quite a lot of gear to fit in, plus at least one litre of water, electrolyte, whatever you use, um, plus food you're going to have to lug around, and I personally take my own food around rather than use too much from, from, from the aid stations. So uh, again, I've had this for three years now. They, they do last if you look after them. Top tip um, with these, the zips are quite fine and get quite stuck, and you can probably see they're quite salty. Um, if you come in from a trail run, just go get straight in the shower with your vest on and wash the salt out, um, and maybe use some kind of silicone lubricant for the for the for the, the zips and they'll stay working otherwise they can get a bit gummed up with seven weeks to go uh, my training is not going great unfortunately i'm about 50 50 whether i'm going to do the race um, i did the hanua hillbilly five weeks ago i did the middle leg of about 21 kilometers had a great time really enjoyed it thoroughly recommend it on the other hand i did fold my left knee backwards very slightly, so I hyperextended it, not a lot, um, and I now have Hoffa syndrome from it. It's not serious, it doesn't really stop me from running, but my mileage just isn't where it quite needs to be at the moment, so I'm probably going to make a call within the next few weeks about how my training's going and whether I do the miler or I do something else. So, fingers crossed, we're 50-50 at the moment, but we'll make a decision soon. On the other hand, I hope your training is going fantastic. Now that we're getting towards late December, you should probably just about be re reaching peak mileage pretty soon, seven weeks out, because you want to go into the race slightly undercooked rather than overcooked. So it's worth kind of coming in, um, having got your, your peak mileage in. Also, as a lot of you will hopefully have quite a decent amount of holiday coming up over the next week or two, it's a really good time to go and get that really long, big adventure run, be that 50k or eight hours or whatever it is you're going to do as part of your training towards the miler. And that will be a topic for another video. Hope you're having a great time. Enjoy your Christmas, guys and gals, and I look forward to speaking again soon and seeing you out on the trails.